Hey YouTube family, it's Umberto from Grey Law TV. GN, good news, bringing you some good news today. We have a lot to get to. For those of you who are new to the channel, we bring you good news on this channel. If you want bad news, you have to go to the other channels and, and, and find that news. It's uh, November 4th and um, we're gonna cover a lot of things. Um, you know, traditionally what I do is I provide you with real time cases from October. It's just November, first week in November. So I'm gonna go through and tell you what happened in October. The cases that we got approved, the adjudication times. This way you can find out in real time what USCIS is doing in terms of processing, in terms of policy, as well as State Department. State Department's opening up. So you can find out exactly what's happening with State Department. We'll go through those cases, okay? And at the end of this video, what I'm gonna do is, if there is a change in administration, I'll tell you what to expect in terms of policy, okay? Immigration policy and how that will uh, affect you and the cases that you currently have pending. So the first thing, a bit of good news, is that uh, two federal district courts have struck down uh, certain aspects uh, of the public charge rule. Uh, as you know, currently it was required that at an interview, employment-based or family-based interview, that you submit this form called an I-944, and you needed to prove economic sufficiency that you could support yourself and you would not become a burden to the government. At the same time, immigration was denying green card cases based on public charge if you were on food stamps or you received any type of public assistance, you know, certainly in this time of COVID uh, where, you know, immigrants had to go, you know, to the hospital, um, you would be denied a green card if that was a public assisted hospital in a certain state. Uh, so the good news is that two district court cases struck down the rule, calling it arbitrary and capricious, that you have to submit this I-944. Um, immigration didn't follow the rules and procedures to implement those policies. Also, judge struck down the denial of a green card based on a person who was on public assistance. So that's great news in terms of public charge. All right, let's talk a little bit about USCIS. What's happening with USCIS? So I um, had a client out of Minnesota file the adjustment, and uh, at least in Minnesota, they have commenced scheduling interviews. I think most district offices are scheduling interviews unless the interview is waived, obviously. Um, but most places, I mean, they're scheduling interviews. This is great. So this is a notice. The interview was October 7th. And as you can see, MSC approved it to make the green card in the same day. So things are moving, folks. That is great news. Second case here is pretty extraordinary. We filed the adjustment. And within five months, as you can see on this notice, the interview was waived and the petition was approved. So that's uh, that's pretty much record time in the middle of COVID. These are all cases in October. Work authorization extensions. Look at this notice. Receipt, it was approved in 30 days, the work authorization extension. So that's good news for those of you who you know have jobs and your job is requesting that you have a valid work permit. Uh, and so you, know, you need to show them that it's been extended. Well, if it's only taking 30 days to extend, that's fantastic. You know, we generally file six months prior to expiration. Um, so it is what it is, right? I mean, it's, it's coming fast. So maybe you file four months prior to expiration. Um, you know, it's discretionary. Things are different. Things are fluid. Things are happening way differently these days. So just use your best judgment. You know, things are going to work out well. Things are happening. Things are moving. So um, that's great. So this is an approval of an O-1 visa. Basically, he's from London, as you can see. Currently, there's a travel ban. He has to go to London to get this O-1 visa stamp in his passport. And how can he get back, right? He's gonna need what's called an NIE waiver exemption to come back to the US. So, you know, what we have done is we have advised 
uh, him that we're trying to get him an appointment uh, in Mexico or Barbados. They are accepting third country nationals uh, because of COVID, you know, to come and to get that visa stamp in the passport and return to the U.S. so he can commence work. This client is here on an ESTA, so he can't commence work until he gets this O-1 stamp in his passport. So this is an option that we have provided to him, and uh, he's going to take advantage of it. Another bit of good news at uh, State Department, I told you before I had a client uh, who we were proactive. His interview was canceled on April 1st, and basically what we did is we navigated the website and we scheduled our own appointment. We did not wait for them to send us a rescheduled appointment. We got the appointment and at that appointment, the case was approved. It was fantastic. This was the consulate in Mumbai. What happened after the interview, they send you a notice visa issue. Then subsequently, in this case, basically, the medical had gone stale, the medical exam. So my client got a notice called 221G to submit the medical exam. She got the medical exam. We submit it. So you have to make an appointment, at least in Mumbai, it's different in different consulates. So my client had to make another appointment to drop off evidence that she took the medical as well as her passport. And uh, subsequently, the visa was issued. That's a bit of good news for State Department. Things are going well. So what can we expect um, if there is a change in administration? Uh, I think what we can expect is a change in policy immediately because most of the immigration changes have come by executive order. Okay? And executive orders can be changed by an incoming administration, very simply. Um, so most of the executive orders that we have today, obviously they're restrictive, right? Um, there's a pause on non-immigrant visas, F1, Hs, Js, and coming to the U.S. till the end of December. Uh, with immigrant preference family visas, also there's a pause, right? They have to wait until uh, after December. So those can be lifted pretty much automatically by a new administration. I think that's what you'll see. I think you'll see in terms of discretion, immigration cases are discretionary. State Department, USCIS, they have discretion in approving cases. And if it's an administration where, you know, um, like the, the public charge rule, uh, where they can utilize discretion depending on the administration wants and needs, they can exercise discretion unfavorably and deny cases, um, which is not good. So I think we're going to see a big, big change in terms of discretion. We'll see a more positive attitude towards immigrants, I believe. You know, DACA is going to be fully back in place with the new administration. I have absolutely no doubt. Hey, YouTube family, thanks so much for watching. Click below, like and subscribe. Go to the Q&A section on the front of our page. Click on it. We have questions and answers uh, that are most commonly asked. Courtney and I, again, we spend a lot of time in answering questions and comments. So keep them coming. But, you know, because we're so overwhelmed, we may have to limit uh, our answers only to those subscribers. So you should subscribe if you have questions. We will answer every single one. So click below, like, and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching Gray Law TV.